Okay, so I know I, I, I introduced myself or he introduced myself already. Uh, I'm Victor Garbenka from Stanford. It's, it's great to uh, visit Moscow and this relatively new institute. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about uh, some uh, recent developments in uh, quantum gravity. Um, so this is going to be very informal, okay? It's getting a bit late. I think people are tired. So uh, not not too many equations. Uh, informal idea that something like a discussion. So uh, part of the talk um, is going to be a review of some recent developments in understanding uh, black hole evaporation and black hole information paradox, so to say. So this goes under the names of replica wormholes, island formula, etc. Uh, this is not my work, uh, and it's it's worked by by many people. Uh, this is a review article that has all the other references. I will not be uh, will not be giving references. Uh, so this this part is uh, needed to motivate. What I'm going to talk uh, about in the second half of the talk, which is of uh, interest uh, for me personally, um, there is uh, questions in cosmology motivated by these recent developments in the black hole physics. And in this uh, second part of the talk, I will just uh, basically list the some uh, some projects of calculation that I think or I hope can be done and uh, probably deliver some uh, interesting answers, but uh, these calculations were not done and uh, they may fail, they may, 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 oops, may produce uh, something very different from what I expect. And then in the last part of the talk, I will explain uh, a, a calculation uh, that we did uh, in this paper together with Juan uh, Maldesen and Li Ming Chen. Uh, which is uh, not quite, not quite there, uh, but it's it's somewhere you know some some sort of intermediate step I would say between uh, uh, what you can think of as black hole physics and, and cosmology, uh, and some interesting phenomena, some interesting non perturbative effects uh, that we call bracket wormholes, uh, turn out to play a role, uh, some important role in this. Uh, Kind of cosmological setup, and then okay, maybe we can conclude. Uh, which, if we conclude, I guess we'll circle back to the second part and see maybe what what this calculation teaches us about this. Okay, good. Uh, so let's start uh, with this discussion. So first, okay. So this this discussion is. Uh, Assumed to be quite general, but uh, some uh, most concrete calculations, I would say, uh, they were done in uh, JT gravity. So let me start with uh, introducing JT gravity, uh, which is uh, the following theory of two dimensional gravity. Okay. Uh, there is a The following action R plus uh, some matter of theory, which is going to be some uh, uh, CT, uh, which is uh, coupled to the metric and uh, some kind of CT gets. Okay, uh, so this is a simple uh, model of uh, two dimensional gravity uh, that uh, has uh, uh, what's called nearly ADS2 solutions. Okay, so uh, you see here that the dilaton, it is a, so this field is a dilaton, importantly, it does not couple uh, to the matter fields at all. So when we integrate out the dilaton, uh, the curvature is set to whatever uh, minus two. So this is the uh, background 
is, is ADS, but then Tilaton itself uh, develops some expectation value that breaks ADS to isometries. Uh, so that's why uh, these uh, solutions are called uh, new ladies. These details are not going to be very important. And of course, I've managed the technical details in this review in the papers at this site. Uh, I'll just try to, uh, to draw some uh, big picture. So, also, it's, it's kind of uh, uh, relevant that uh, uh, this JT gravity uh, it appears as a near horizon limit of some uh, near extreme of high dimensional lab. Also, it's not. Uh, uh, completely disconnected from uh, discussion of uh, uh, high dimensional uh, uh So now, uh, so these uh, uh, people, uh, they proposed uh, the following uh, to, to consider the following solution uh, in this uh, field. So, uh, in fact, in some modification of this theory. So we go to first the Euclidean signature. Okay, and consider the disk. So this disk is the Euclidean ADS. Okay, uh, and then uh, the solution is such that the uh, Tilaton uh, grows when we approach the boundary. The Tilaton grows as let's say one over z when, uh, uh, or maybe let's say some pi r over z, where uh, z is the, the boundary coordinate. Well, so Z is a radial coordinate near the bound. Okay. Uh, and the idea is that at some uh, value, so this, say this line, it is some large but finite value of phi, which is called uh, phi equal uh, phi B. And here we glue it to the flat space time. Okay. So we have it is two in the interior with this JT gravity. And then outside, we have flat space without dynamical gravity. Okay, so this is the idea. We have uh, dynamical gravity coupled to safety matter fields in the interior, and then we have we glue it to flat space. Through which the matter fields can go through, but gravity is turned off over here. Okay, so this is, uh, I will explain why, like in a moment, I will explain that this setup is a sort of model for an uh, evaporating black hole. Okay, but uh, uh, this, this kind of setup is going to be a theme throughout this talk and also throughout the later parts. So I find it convenient to, uh, to start from uh, introducing this setup. Okay, so uh, to see that that, that uh, uh, this is a black hole, basically what one does is one cuts uh, this uh, uh, this circle in the uh, time reflection, Euclidean time reflection symmetric points, and uh, then uh, continues to the Lorentzian signature. Okay, from which we get basically from here, uh, we get the Lorenz and Minkowski couples to Lorenz and ADS2. Here's the horizon, uh, and so the, the way we see that it is a black hole is because the Euclidean time is periodic, which is like a Thermal setup. Okay, so this corresponds to uh, Lorentz and signature that corresponds to standing a black hole. Uh, and indeed, there is there is a horizon. There is still this Lorentz and boundary that sits at large but finite value uh, of the dilaton, which means that we cut off our Lorentz and ADS. It's uh, some value epsilon of uh, radial coordinate, okay, which is which is large. Epsilon is assumed to be very small, smaller than all other parameters. So I'm okay. more familiar with the description in terms of the strand and so on. You, you know this uh, formulation. 
Well, well, okay. So how is it connected? It's some change of coordinates. It's good, good, good. Uh, so we are uh, so this uh, trumpets and so on. Uh, they will well something similar will play a role later. For now, we're just considering the uh, the simplest uh, classical solution. Normally, there is this. like a disk and some fluctuating boundary. And this kind of thing. Yes, 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 yes. Good, good, good. So this is this is the disk. Uh -huh. This is the disk. The boundary is fluctuating, but now I'm just looking at the leading classical solution for which you know boundary is uh, uh, is a straight whatever straight line or straight circle, right? And now the modification to yeah maybe some just standard JT gravity is that uh, I am uh, gluing to it a region of uh, flat space, okay? And it, uh, we, we do, I mean, I'm, I'm, for now I'm just the, Describing the leading, you know, the classical solution. Okay, metric for now it's just frozen, so the boundary is frozen. And the fluctuations of the Schwartz and fluctuations of the boundary are not going to play on. Okay, we can include them. Uh, there are some conditions so that they are under control. Namely, this uh, CFT should be taking the C large and throughout this talk, I should say, C is taking to infinity, the zero is taking to infinity, the zero with C fixed. And large, and then you can convince yourself that in this scaling limit, whatever I will say, we can ignore the fluctuations of Schwartz. Okay, but thanks for the question. Uh, any okay, let me say let me say one more phrase and then I'll pause for more questions. Okay, I just wanted to say so this this setup it is the ADS2 black hole. Okay, so it's some friend of uh, uh, how high dimensional uh, black hole in this classical radius space time, uh, but the boundary is cut off, uh, the, the bulk is cut off at some uh, large but finite distance, and metric is frozen uh, on this boundary, uh, but matter fields can go through and end up in this uh, Minkowski region. So it's like an ADS black hole coupled to a bulk. Okay. This is the setup, uh, which means that this black hole can evaporate. Okay, normally, like if you have a large black hole in ADS, it does not evaporate. So there's some, uh, it's not the, of course, one can formulate the formation paradox as well, but it's not kind of that easy to relate the conception of the operating flat space black hole. So this uh, moving the boundary in a little bit and attaching to the flat space region, this allows. Uh, this black hole evaporate and we have uh, a setup more similar to you know Hawking's original setup. Okay, so namely there are these CFT fields that can leave the boundary, uh, and uh, uh, this is an analog. It's again like a calculable analog, semi classically calculable analog of uh, Hawking's uh, uh, black hole evaporation. Okay, is the is the setup. Clear? Excuse me. Well, there is a junction surface between between flat and uh, ADS. Yes, as I said. So I mean, on, on some background, there is a solution for the dilaton that I didn't spell out. Uh, but uh, what's important is that asymptotically near the boundary, uh, this dilaton behaves as uh, some constant uh, divided by the, the radial coordinate. Right, boundary is at equal to zero, uh, and when this Scalar fields, it's a scalar field, it's a different line object, but it reaches a fixed large value of pi d, which is the parameter of the model. Okay, uh, that's when we do that's where we do. And if the boundary starts to oscillate, we always glue uh, you know at wherever the value of the dilaton is equal to pi d. So inside this is ADS, and this uh, area around is is flat. Yes. And this solves the uh, questions of motion identity and you do the crossing of the boundary. Yeah, there is no, yeah, this, well, it's it's, it's sort of uh, by hand, yes, because Lagrangian, okay, this Lagrangian is valid inside here, and yes, here I grew it with theory without, without gravity, so it is, uh, uh, there are no non trivial junction conditions to satisfy because gravity is not dynamic in here, so it is fine. It's like this is ADS2 with, you know, as far as metric is concerned, this is a digital boundary uh, for the metric over here. And then uh, uh, here is the flat space. Junctions is supposed to be smooth. 
junction uh, is uh, well yeah it, it is important when uh, no shell fields fields are I mean both fields are dynamic on both sides so uh, so I should say that this this idea of having this junction uh, it is considered well, not as a problem as I know, an issue in this setup if you look in the papers there is some discussion for the purpose of this talk let's assume that it's fine that it can be promoted or something we model like we're not going if we go to this level of details like we're not gonna, but it's a so valid question it's been discussed people are aware of it but consider to be okay Just, uh, take my word for it uh good so the model yeah, the idea is that it behaves roughly similar to how in black hole in flat space that again you look at it from far away and you collect from the but it's very hard it's calculable you can do very explicit calculations with this model that's plus okay good so now what kind of calculation uh do people do uh they insert they consider some surface Like this surface well, doesn't matter. Some Cauchy slice. It like um, I should have asked for a color chop. Okay, I didn't. That's my fault. If anybody knows how to produce color chop quickly, then maybe it will help. Sorry about that. Uh, okay, I'll try to go with the white chop. Do people on Zoom see what's going on? That thing I'm too small. Oh, it's more or less okay. It's fine. Okay, uh, let me redraw this picture, make it a little bit larger. So forget the Euclidean preparation. Let's just do the Lorentzian, bigger Lorentzian picture. Okay, we have a Euclidean picture and a Lorentzian picture. We understand that they are actually uh, over here. So this is my horizon. This is a black hole, and we consider some sort some Cauchy slice at late times. And on this slice, we pick some surfaces like here that are fully in the non gravitational region. Okay, now sorry, I should I should have asked many times. Okay, uh, and so this the surface we're going to call it A. Okay, the union of these two surfaces is A. And then we're going to calculate entropy of let's make a very stupid image. Entropy of radiation uh, in this region A. Okay. And uh, the idea is this this radiation. So this this, this point is at some Lorentz and time t. So this radiation it grows with time t. And we know this radiation. This is again okay, just a calculation, but it's the CFT on some background, any two-dimensional background is conformal to flat space. You know how to calculate. Uh, an entropy of an interval in flat space, you do some conformal mapping, some calculation, and that's what, what you get. Okay, that's some fictional proportionality, central charge, and times t. So this grows linear this time. And this is in agreement with the result of Hawking's calculation that the entropy of radiation grows linear this time. Okay. Now we draw the following for what? This time. There's entropy. Uh, this is entropy of radiation. S radiation in our uh, interval A. Okay, and at some point it crosses the entropy of uh, black hole. And okay, it's something I forgot to mention, but that this topological term it calculates the entropy of the black hole okay and the way okay maybe the easiest way to, to see it well, we can do some formal calculation jt gravity but then if we just remember the reduction from our four dimensions then the dilaton is like a radius of the two sphere okay 
And this S0, it's sometimes called phi zero. It's basically the phi plus S0. This is the total value of the telecom. So this is the total area in high dimensions, right? So this is just a, a Bekenstein working formula. And uh, the well, high dimensional Planck is a set of blocks. So that's the entropy. Yeah. Just, yeah. You evaluated on, on the equation of motion, but that's what the equation is. Yes. Uh, and oh, yeah, it's just action. Where, uh, so, this is the, so at some point, entropy of radiation uh, uh, becomes larger than the value of the entropy of the black hole. And this is basically one manifestation of what is called black hole information. So they, uh, there's something that is now called uh, central dogma, uh, which says that the black hole uh, can be thought of as a system with finitely many degrees of freedom. Uh, and that it is, uh, it has uh, uh, e to the zero degrees of freedom, so the maximal entropy that you can get from some uh, system that's entangled with the black hole uh, should be S0. Okay, so the fact that the uh, entropy goes up, this is it's just a version of working the original calculation formulating the black hole function. Okay, so now uh, Page at some point, uh, Don Page, he I looked at it and he said uh, that the carefully correctly computed entropy uh, should not grow, that it should only grow until it reaches at zero, and then instead it should flatten out. Well, uh, the original version of page curve was in a uh, flat space where he put back reaction uh, such that you know black hole was actually changing and uh, uh, increasing its temperature. So, in, if you look at page paper, then uh, uh, the curve actually goes down and follows, you know, the, the shrinking part of the black hole. Uh, but in this ADS setup, uh, the size of the black hole stays the same. Basically, you can think that you're heating a constant with radiation uh, or whatever. Again, some minor technical detail that it should flatten out. But the important thing is that it should, it should stop growing. Okay, but it flattens out or goes down. Uh, it's a bit of a detailed question. The real paradox is that uh, it grows versus it doesn't grow. Okay. Is that clear? Is that, is there any questions? Most this setup. So now the uh, the the breakthrough. Well, I should also say that if we think about uh, this system holographically, holographically it means that uh, we replace the gravitational part of the system. With some CFT that lives on this bound, right? Then it's kind of obvious that okay, the CFT is unitary and that there's no black hole information at all. The black hole is just some subset of subset of CFT degrees of freedom, etc. But the, the breakthrough of uh, some uh, recent years, summarized uh, in, the, uh, in this paper, is that just with gravitational methods, uh, doing gravitational calculation, people understood how to reproduce uh, the correct. Okay, at least it's you know, one of the very concrete results. It's not, uh, it's maybe too quick of a summary of the whole breakthrough, but there is a very concrete result that, that happened recently okay, within the last couple of years. Let me tell you uh, how the calculation uh, went. Okay, so the, the calculation uh, goes under the name of the uh, island formula, uh, which says that the entropy of this uh, region A is the uh, uh, minimum. Over island configurations. I'll explain what it is in, uh, uh, what it is in a second of the area term or profile Newton plus S A. Okay, 
So the, what is what, what does this formula mean? Uh, it it sorry, says sorry, that, sorry, the minimum is from the sum of the sum. Uh, minimum I mean, there is sum, one, yeah. one more break. Yeah, sorry, there is another break. Yes. Uh, well, I'll explain in a moment what are the silence and then it will become clear this formula is. Okay. So uh, this is just so again, I say what the formula is, and then uh, the claim is that people derive this formula from just gravitational puppy. Okay, so this this formula has meaning, you know, that's absolutely independent from ads CT in principle, it's just a gravitational proportion. Okay. I first tell what the formula is. So the formula is that you need to uh, look and this semi-classical geometry, uh, and allow yourself to nucleate uh, what's called islands. And in two dimensions, uh, it's very uh, simple uh, to imagine what the island is, because uh, what is calculation of the entropy? Calculation of the entropy is a calculation of an expectation value of uh, twist fields, right, in a two-dimensional CT. So the prescription for islands in two dimensions, it basically boils down to the fact that you allow yourself to pair produce twist fields anywhere in the gravitational region okay uh, and then uh, you know some region in between this uh, pair produced twist fields uh this is what's called an island just a terminology okay so you need to imagine putting this twist field anywhere you like but the thing is that for every twist field you pay the area term and in this case the area term which is the value of the dilaton uh, at the position of this twist, twist, twist field. Okay, so nucleating an island costs a lot. Well, phi plus a zero everywhere. You pay at least the price of a zero, uh, which is something very large. Okay, but but you may reduce significantly this term. You may what's called purify this entropy of a by including the okay, and this is indeed what happens. Basically, okay, you can convince yourself that it's enough to just create two island fields. Okay, they're over here. You pay this price of uh, uh, two two a zero in this case. By the way, because it's a two sided black hole, I should put it in my chat two over here. Um, uh, but uh, but anyway, so you you nucleate, you nucleate uh, uh, two. I mean, there's a single sided set up. Uh, never mind that. Uh, the, 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 the idea is that you nucleate this island, then you minimize, you find an extremum of all possible positions of the island. And what happens is at late time, this point kind of comes close to this point. So the entropy, instead of calculating the entropy, because the whole state is pure, instead of calculating the entropy of uh, this uh, three regions, you just calculate the entropy of regions in between. Okay. Everybody knows complement entropy, right? It doesn't matter which you can take region or its complement, right? As a is equal to s uh, a bar. Okay. Uh, and that thing actually can become very, very small. So what happens is that there is always a kind of subleading settle point in the entropy calculation. Uh, which is roughly two at zero plus some correction from this matter entity that is small. Okay, it is some uh, uh, some kind of settle point that probably behaves something like this. Okay, I, I don't really remember how this behaves over here, but it doesn't matter because every here, everywhere here it is subdominant. Okay, because the minimum is given by this curve. But once this curve crosses to a zero plus some small correction, then this other settle point uh, with the island insertion dominates uh, and takes over the, the calculation then. Okay. So is it clear that if we believe this island formula, then uh, okay, we have the, the calculation of the page curve? So what's the justification? Good, good, good. Yeah, I, I was I'm going in this step. So if we believe this formula, then then calculation goes. Okay, just want to make this point. Now, how is this formula derived? Okay, very quickly again, just giving you the idea. Uh, so the entropy is calculated uh, with uh, uh, what's called the replica peak, right? So it is uh, some uh, S is trace rho log rho, which is a, a limit of 
of uh, n going to one, trace, row, then divided by n minus one or, or something like this uh, minus. Okay. Minus row. Uh, anyway. Um, mm -hmm. D by D n of uh, this uh, goes to one. So this is the so first one is to calculate what's called the radiant. Okay, so you first start with the calculating of trace rho to the n. So to calculate this trace rho to the n, uh, you consider and focus and let me draw the you know the Euclidean setup. So you consider we have our integral somewhere here, a then n of the objects like this. Okay. And then the, the gravitational prescription. When I say that this formula is derived, it's derived under the following assumption. Under the assumption that when you calculate trace rho to the n, you, of course, the region where gravity is not dynamic, well, I mean, this is cap six, but uh, the region where gravity is fluctuating, it is allowed to have connections between different copies of the system. Okay, so in particular, you have, say, for rho equal two, you have some connections. You know, the space time is a pair where they drew here. So I have this flat boundary, and then there's like a cylinder that connects two of the space time. So this is what is called this is an example of replica wormhole. So wormhole calls that traditionally, you know, this objects that connect different parts of space time, it gets a replica wormhole because it connects different replicas in the replica. Okay. Good. So now the, the idea is that if you take this uh, n to one limit uh, of this calculation that produces rho or rho, okay, then uh, uh, that lands you on this calculation. Okay, so basically it is, uh, well, it's a version, I mean, it's similar to a derivation of uh, some root Kanagi formula by Moldesen uh, and Corvettes and, uh, and, and other people. Okay, so this is, I mean, again, you can look in the details of how the calculation goes, but the point is that uh, you start with the solutions for, for any integer n. Uh, you look, I mean, you consider this uh, non trivial self, and then you take limit n to one, and what remains of this non trivial topology. Is this uh, twist field nucleated in the middle? Okay. So, I mean, okay. Probably if I go in, in more details, it will you know, become too long. But this is this is roughly this what consider you know given uh, the ability of calculators to the path integrals, which in this JT gravity is quite well the technique uh, is done. Then we derive this one. Okay, good. So this is what I wanted to say in the first part of the talk. Then maybe I just mentioned that there are other calculations uh, where this uh, non-trivial topology become important. In the black hole case, for example, people calculate the uh, the two-point function at very late times, which is another version in CE on the leading settle, it decays exponentially to zero. But then the subleading settles, they uh, uh, allow it to bounce back and it starts to grow as it supports uh, in a horse preservation reservoirs of information. So this, this kind of calculations in the black hole setup they can be done. We know what to expect from idea CFT, and this gravitational language helps us to reproduce some of the results expected from this. Okay. Now I want to say uh, 
Okay, we go to smaller. Okay, the and for, for cosmology by cosmology, I mainly mean the sinus space. Okay, let's remember the panel diagram of the sinus space that looks like this. Okay, uh, if we consider a single, so this is the static patch. Okay, when we consider the single static patch observer. Uh, they see the cosmological press. Okay, and then there is another static patch observer that sees another, uh, that has another uh, cosmological horizon on their side. Now, uh, there is also a calculation of uh, Gibbons and Corbin that gives the, uh, the center entropy, which is given by the horizon area. Horizon. Cosmological horizon part of the one minus two uh, again in uh, in one unit. Uh, so for G for by G information. So uh, the there is a speculation or, or an idea that uh, the Cedar space time has some properties. Uh, similar to black hole, namely that this finiteness of the center entropy should play some important role, uh, and uh, there should be some. If there is some microscopic description of the center space, it also has somehow finitely many degrees of freedom. Okay, so now there is no robust formulation of this, no you know real reasons to expect it as we have in the black hole case from ADSCFT because we don't have an analog of ADSCFT. So the uh, kind of the line of research is to go from that side, is to use uh, gravitational methods to try to you know establish some of the properties, some properties maybe analog of, of, of the space curve or something like this in the cosmological sense. And the idea is that okay, if we succeed, it will help us maybe to navigate towards what the which properties the microscopic or a microscopic theory of the sitter space should have. Okay, this is the, the concept. So now what kind of calculations uh, do I want to do? Uh, for example, the if it is true that the entire sitter space time is made out of this. Two static patch regions that have a finitely many degrees of freedom, which is something that's a lenny's aspect of an advocating this. Then this entire inflation in patch, so okay, uh, so this region, the center space, is the inflation in patch. So if we take a slice over here, it has a spatial volume that grows to infinity. This is actually very similar to the to this. Uh, uh, slice over here, uh, uh, close to that of a black hole with the singularity over here that they didn't draw. But before it reaches the singularity, the spatial slice also uh, becomes very large. And the idea that this finiteness of entropy here, it, it, it again can be, can be made more precise. Uh, uh, the number of degrees of freedom, independent degrees of freedom, living on this uh, spatial slice get reduced. Again, this, this kind of wormholes in these two dimensional models, they, they, can, they can make it explicit. There's a paper by Jen Bin Yang, Luca Lesko, and Koshan uh, Xin, uh, uh, the third author, who, uh, who showed that explicit. So now, can we, can we do the same calculation in cosmology in the city space? So that will be something extremely interesting from my point of view. We can see that the Number of degrees of freedom living in on this inflationary slice and the reheating surface, if you want to use the inflation terminology, is actually much smaller than uh, it naively seems to be. Okay. Uh, another kind of calculation that we want to do again, if one may want to consider some two point function along the world line uh, of this observer, and in the classical gravity decays uh, exponentially. Because stuff falls behind the horizon and decays exponentially. But if the sitter space you know, is assisted with finite entropy, two point functions cannot decay exponentially. They should uh, eventually recur and bounce back. 
Tests can be seen in, in this black box. So again, this is type of calculation we want to do, uh, and maybe see it from the gradation part. Of the problem. Okay, so this is kind of information. Now let me tell you the calculation uh, that that we have actually done. I have like fifteen minutes, right? How much time? Yeah. Okay. So the calculation that we've done in this paper with uh, Juan and Edith, uh, well, we've done a few calculations, but the one I know this year, uh, it used the same version of actually ATS JS graph. So uh, one thing that we tried is to do a calculation in the super version of JT graphics. Okay, which again can be done, but there are subtleties, and I don't have time to go into subtleties. So as a warm-up exercise. Uh, we still consider this system very similar system, basically an identical theory, but we look at it different. Okay. Now, also, if in, uh, instead of we rotate the picture uh, 90 degrees, okay, so we consider this Euclidean ADS solution. Uh, let me draw it as a uh, still as, as a square. It's more proper to draw. I, I draw it as a stripe. Okay, so this is a Euclidean ADS solution uh, with metric. Let me draw it as an infinite cup plane. Let me take Poincare solution. I'll do this. The Poincare solution uh, with the metric given by and the dilaton given as you know, by R by Z. Uh, and Z now goes upwards, right? So this is not how we usually draw ADS. I'm usually uh, on the side. Okay, now I want to think of Z as a time code. So here I have this ADS zoom. Uh, and here I have flat space, no gravity, as we have over here. And matter fields, I still have this large and CFT. That matter fields can go through. Okay, so once we have this setup, we, we prepare state by this ADS2 geometry, and then we take flat space, and then this flat space we can rotate it over. Okay, is the is and is the setup clear? So this is a very kind of a uh, little bit of an abstract model for inflation. It would have been a simple, more like realistic model of inflation if I took the uh, DS2 version, and then I would have a metric which which was uh, uh, you know minus d the squared plus d x squared divided by minus e the squared, and the diloton would be uh, like an infloton basically. The diloton would be phi r over minus uh, eta, okay, where eta is the conformal for w time. I, calculation there can be done, but there are some subtleties like I don't want to. Going, okay, that's the, but it's this way I'm telling it's a warm up to the logical but I think it's still it teaches us interesting questions. Interesting lessons. Let me get to the lessons uh, just in the simplest setup. So now uh, we can do a somewhat similar thing as uh, we were doing over there. We can consider calculating, taking some interval A over here in the flat space, in non gravitational region. And calculate entropy well, basically of what is CV radiation in this model. So you see what was Hawking radiation, the black hole case once it flipped it on the side is basically like a CV radiation uh, in the historical model of cosmology. So I want to calculate entropy uh, of this uh, CV radiation. Okay. And again, on this uh, background, entropy of this CV radiation is given by something like C over 6. Well, let me say the interval of this size is uh, size of the interval is L. All right. Correct. It's just a CT entropy of an interval. Right? So, as you see, when L becomes large, this thing grows and eventually can, when L goes to infinity, can become much bigger than. Uh, uh, F0, this iteration. So we may expect some tension if we get entropy of CV radiation you know, much larger than the C At least 
in some paradigm where the city space itself is made uh, out of client and many degrees of freedom, that would, uh, that would, that would fail. Okay. And indeed, it fails. Because to calculate n, and we, uh, something obvious, I hope obvious, but uh, we assume that the same rules for dealing with gravitational path integrals and replica peaks and entropy calculations as apply in ideas, they should apply. Okay. So we do the same thing. Uh, to calculate this entropy, we're going to use the, the replica peak. Okay. Uh, and uh, And what happens? What happens uh, is that instead of using this formula, we need to use the island formula. So we need to allow for this the twist fields to get nucleated in the gravitational region. Uh, and it turns out that twist fields can get nucleated the following way. And instead of computing this entropy, we're going to be computing this entropy of this region. Uh, so S. A uh, is in fact is a minimum of this uh, thing uh, you know, c over six log uh, squared squared and another settle uh, which is uh, two as zero plus uh, let's call this you know, d one and d two plus entropy of d one uh, union v2 okay and this thing itself should be uh, you know minimized of a position of these islands okay now this is again some simple calculation it's the uh, entropy of two intervals but when uh entropy of two intervals is actually something complicated but when this interval is very large it's sort of interesting it factorizes okay so it's just the sum of this entropies of these two uh small regions can you explain what is the definition of this boundary points uh how do you call them, by the way? I just did not understand. What is it? Uh, twist field. Okay, I should. I should. Yeah. Okay, so I should have. The definition of uh, uh, the position of this. Point. Yeah. So this. Okay. So this point, I I just took them. Yes. Uh, thanks. I took them some small time after the heating, sir. Okay. This thing I call the heating, sir. If you allow me, where the transition. Okay. Uh, so this happens. I insert them. So remember, there is no value to this here. So I just give the coordinate definition. And it's okay. So it is some time uh, that actually can be taken to zero, same time time, you know, t that is small uh, after the heating surface, and then there's some distance l between them. And of course, you set up a sensation environment, it doesn't matter, you know, say this is coordinate zero and this is coordinate l. Okay, so this point is frozen. So now, okay, I, I sorry, I, I, sh I should have uh, reviewed this German, but the calculation of entropy. Uh, in, in a CFT is the uh, uh, same as uh, expectation value of uh, uh, twist fields located at you know, T0 uh, T, uh, T L. Uh, these twist fields, they introduce uh, uh, some sort of monogamy for, for metal fields around this point. It's again, uh, uh, like if you do it, okay, it will probably take me time. I, it uh, look, it, it doesn't matter. All that matters is that we know how to calculate entropies of various regions in two dimensional conformal field physics. Okay, and then I just quote the results from there. The rest is a technicality. Uh, what I'm saying that regions, boundaries of these regions, uh, they can be in principle arbitrary once uh, gravity is included. The way it happens is that uh, when we go to you know the replicated geometry, some very complicated topologies uh, get nucleated here. Okay, they should be included, and the claim is that uh, what uh, when the replica number is uh, taken to one, uh, all what remains uh, is uh, the you know uh, kind of spontaneously nucleated boundaries of regions. Okay, so that was that was this derivation that I kind of sketched but skipped. But uh, but all I want I wanted to follow this the same logic. So we may you know question various technicalities of these calculations. Eventually they get complicated, but they produce very reasonable results 
in the ABS case where we have a powerful cross check, which is ABS CFT. Okay, so you can be skeptical. You say, okay, nobody knows how to deal with gravitational button. What are you talking about? But they keep producing multiple non trivial results uh, in the situation where we have a robust check, which is ADS CFT. Okay, so I, I want you to consider this as the argument that these methods are correct. And then just say, okay, methods they rely on gravitational path integral, and it's kind of the same in you know in ADS and cosmology. It will be strange if rules you know change completely once we rotate the picture 90 degrees. But you talk about complicated topology, you mean currently uh, the way how you move is replicas yes. one with another. Yeah? Yes. And so what is it? Uh, in the process of this doing this is the way how how this the notion of this uh, Islands appear, right? Yes, yes. The island is basically it's a pinched connection between two replicas in a sense. Well, whatever you need to, you know, you have a manifold with n replicas, and you need to think what it means to so analytically continue with n. Uh, but okay, if you're a little bit uh, creative about this procedure, you can convince yourself it's like a brain. So at some point, you know, you can think of it, you have a brain which tension is uh, Roughly speaking, proportional to n minus one in the n to one limit, you can think that what, what remains of this connection is some brain, because as you said, there will be some junction condition, you know. So you need to insert a brain of tension n minus one, but then when you take n to one, tension of the brain goes to zero, so there's no vacation of the geometry. But we also divide by n minus one in the replica formula. That's why the area of the brain survives. So for some finite n, there is a term which is the brain tension. And then you know what remains is just the area of the brain because brain tension goes to zero. But then, uh, as far as I know, there's such a term is used in this process, something like uniformization, is right? So this is. Uh, I do not know this word. <laughs> uh, no. Yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe it's right, but I, I'm not. I, I'm not a. Uh, you know, should also not. Uh, uh, you know, an expert on this entropy calculations by any means. I sort of. Uh, you know, my, I'm a user of these results uh, and trying to apply this to, uh, to cosmologists. Of course, if at some point we'll reach the limits of my understanding of this. But, but so this kind of fluid procedure produces a kind of a spiral structure, and then you project it onto one plane. Yes, yes. And then you get some singularity because of these projections. But the not, not singularity of the metric, but for fields, for meta fields, there remains a singularity in yeah. a sense. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, this, uh, this okay. I should uh, end in, in five minutes, but I wanted again. I just uh, quote the result of this calculation that this entropy, okay, no longer depends on uh, this the interval, uh, the side of the interval, okay. And what we get is again some sort of okay. Maybe put a log. L here instead, and we get uh, some sort of analog of the space curve for the zipper space, but this is this line, and this corresponds to uh, this calculation that no longer depends on the side of Okay, so now this, okay, five minutes, uh, this calculation actually leads to an analog. Of uh, information paradox in the setup. Uh, okay, I don't have time to, to explain it, but actually, if you take uh, this calculation seriously and you consider a slightly more complicated setup with uh, multiple fields, you can actually violate uh, what is called uh, strong. Uh, subjectivity, uh, equality, so strong subjectivity. Okay, mm, I don't have time to explain it. Uh, let me, uh, if maybe people, somebody wants to hear it afterwards, I can explain this, this strong subjectivity setup. Uh, I just want to say that this setting actually leads to a paradox. Uh, which means that either again to throw away the gravitational path integral, is, you know, these rules do not apply, or we are missing some other topology. 
that is even more important. And the latter is true. So now in the remaining you know, two minutes, let me explain what is the missing topology. The idea is that every time we do a calculation in cosmology, we actually need to consider not just the uh, say the bra of the cat of our state. This two, this is flat, say with some time t, but we actually need to take this is flat the cat of our state, right? Okay, every time we do this calculation of entropy, we will sandwich our twist or whatever sandwich our interval between the bra, or bra and the cat. Correct. Okay? Okay, what I draw here, and time goes upwards here, time goes this way here, and then I mean, this is where I glue right the cat. Okay, and the idea is that nothing, the rules that we apply them, they, sh they should allow us to consider this kind of connections where this, you know, the power of space time that, that created the brow of the wave function is connected uh, with the one that creates the cat. It's a graphical representation of taking the trace. Ah, uh, well, no, taking the trace happens over here. Okay, this is where I take the trace. So remember, this is time. So I take it. So I, this is. Uh, let me make the and then improve drawing. So, so without color, it's a bit hard. So this is say dash is ADS, okay, and not dash is flat space. So this is a, this is a state. At time t, okay, with all possible geometries here. Now, this drawing, the inverted drawing, and this is t. This is the conjugate state at time t, okay. And then I do when I take a trace, okay, insert some operators here, right. At time t, and then I glue this to this. So this is the glue. They operate the sensor here. Now this connection, it is the claim is that this is how you should use the gravitational path integral. Okay, that you should uh, oh, in principle also in, I mean, anyway, you should allow for glue to be brown cat. Okay, now I say okay, maybe it's nonsense, but what happens is that this paradox. This violation of strong superiority it actually gets resolved because every time before the claim is the following and again this in this simple model it is a calculation we know how to calculate gravitational path integral with topologies it's not just some blah 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 I'm not showing you the formulas and right of time but they are there in the paper this part is you know, it's, it's a solid calculation uh, that every time before the Entropy of an interval becomes larger uh, than this uh, zero, the uh, zero, uh, so that we run into the paradox. So that this guy dominates, we run into the paradox. This thing appears, dominates the calculation, and actually, calculation of entropy on top of this background uh, never leads to, to any kind of paradox. Okay. So let me let me end here. Uh, just I, I repeat what I said. The logic is a little bit convoluted, uh, and I, I didn't show you explicit calculation. All I can say that in this simple model, you know, things can be computed very explicitly. I just again summarize the logic. Okay, so uh, if we assume that we need to use uh, the same rules as we do in ADS for doing these calculations. In this cosmological model, which is also ADA, but it's like interpreted differently. Okay. Then we naively run into a paradox. Okay. I didn't explain in detail what the paradox is, but there is a, there's a paradox very close relative to the information paradox. However, if we also kind of extend the rules a bit further and allow for connections between the bra and the care of the wave function, there is another set of the kind of in a non trivial way comes before the paradox appears and cures it. Okay, so this is too much as much as we could.
do for now. So the rules, the, the, the outcome of this lesson is that rules of gravitational path integral seem to be consistent. Uh, this extended rules, you know, that allow for inclusion of uh, non-trivial topologies and connection between the but between the space and regions corresponding to different systems, uh, they uh, seem to be consistent in a non trivial way. Okay, this is what we can do for now. And basically, the, the, uh, this is encouraging uh, this, for me to, to continue with this program and to uh, with doing this technically more complicated calculations, say with the uh, negative sign over here. Uh, then they can seem analogous and uh, but lead to some additional subtleties, uh, uh, and uh, hopefully it will teach us something about some microscopic properties uh, of this uh, of this cosmology. Okay, let, 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 let then hear the questions. Then they, you know, if somebody wants to hear more technical details, or maybe some um, something about uh, reconstruction of the interior of the power and say a few words. Thank you. So uh, the uh, the original computation in the case of ADS mm -hmm. is done I mean JT gravity. Your sum of a module space is a high general I have negative curvature, etc. See, this is positive curvature. How you imagine? Ah, good question. Okay, very good question. So, uh, this theory, be it DS or ADS theory, with matter included, is not UV complete. Okay? Pure JT gravity is in a sense UV complete, matrix model, etc. Some of it generate converges in some proper way. Uh, here, it is not UV complete because there's a type of instability. Okay, if you if we draw if on top of any of these geometries, we draw a you know small handle, okay, and then calculate its contribution, there will be matter fields running around the small handle. Uh, the energy will be negative, it will be negative kind of energy. Uh, and when we shrink the side of this handle to zero, it will blow up. Okay. So now uh, the idea is that. Uh, this material topological configuration, uh, and as well as you know, this topological configuration that leads to this island calculations, they are of a different sort. They are not dominated by some you know small degenerate limits of modular parameters. Uh, they these are semi-classical settles that nowhere have you know small curvature in small cycle. Okay, now of course, when you say something and basically what we do is just put a cutoff on this theory, put a cutoff and then ADS tables or something, then all these guys, you know, are suppressed. Now, this is again not uh, something that is fully satisfactory if we think of this theory of reduction of some higher dimensional theory that's some in the completion, but they uh, maybe something I, I, I forgot to mention, and I think that it's uh, implicit is that the rules. As such, that we only trust configurations that are, you know, very effective field field. So I only use this gravitational path integral when curvatures are small, when all the cycles are, you know, large enough, larger than the cutoff. Okay. So for that reason, you seem to assume that it will be better than the uh, Yeah, that's, that gives me a hope. That gives me a hope. At least we can do the calculation now. Of course. Uh, it's one of the okay, there's some infinite uh, list of future directions is you know to look for these configurations in high dimensions. And uh, the general uh, idea is that uh, it's very hard to find uh, uh, such a configuration unless you have a topology which is oh, sorry, the geometry uh, locally at least, which is something you know across as. Uh, let's say S2 equivalent for dimensions. So uh, now, but this, as I said, these topologies in high dimensions, they exist because it's in some you know, near extreme of black hole, but also in the Citrus space, if we take. Uh, oh, there's a question. Okay, I just finished the sentence and then I moved it. Near, you know, near 
uh, there's a nearly extreme of black holes in the Cedar space that are extreme just because their mass approaches the maximum a lot, of, a lot of mass. And they are near horizon region that has this topology. So the idea that once you find topology, at least in this journey, some a contribution to this theory, it will also exist, at least and be calculable also in four dimensions. Now, will it ever be dominant? Uh, you know, are there observables in which this is dominant? Okay, this is, a, this is the question. This is something we're looking at, but it's not hopeless for the reasons that you described. Let me take a question here from the chat. Uh, oh, Valerie has a question. Yeah. Um, you alluded to several times about uh, microscopic structure of anti de -sitter, de -sitter geometry. What did you mean and uh, what have you learned? Uh, okay, so for, for ADS, I mean, I meant literally the following, that if we have our, uh, again, ADS space time coupled to flat space, ADS2 flat. In this particular case, okay, let me compete. In this case, this is uh, equivalent to an SYK model uh, on a line coupled to some CFT uh, on a whatever, on a half space, on half of an oxygen space. Uh, so, okay, it's like a model is some, some quantum mechanics of, uh, of a bunch of fermions, and uh, people, it's conjectured to be dual to this ADS2, JT gravity in ADS2, and then people couple some better fields to it, and they do computer simulations with this SYK model coupled with some fields, and they, okay, in some limit, they reproduce. This gravitational calculation. So we can think that we have a microscopic model. Microscopic meaning we can put it on a computer. Okay, everything is finite. You evaluate and you get similar uh, answers for the observables that we can see. Let's say some entropies, etc. Okay, so this is in ADS case. Does it answer your question? How does this relate to the uh, to the calcul to the, the to the replica calculation and uh, you know all this stuff you. Yeah, yeah, in, in three ways. Uh, again, you are, uh, uh, yes, I'm, uh, there could be people in the audience that know it uh, better than me. Uh, but it relates in the following way. First, it gives the same answers because, you know, well, in this system, because this SYK is finitely many fermions. So if we consider, you know, some interval uh, in this CFT uh, that can only be entangled, uh, you know, with, with this fermions, its entropy cannot be larger than. Uh, uh, you know, number of these fermions. Okay, it's kind of obvious from this calculation, and then uh, uh, you know you can check it on the computer, but it's obvious because the Hilbert space is finite here, and gravity reproduces this. But but it's more detailed than this because they actually see. Well, I don't know if they can actually calculate the entropy and uh, on the computer entropy is hard, but there are some other so there's two point functions that I talked about. That it's not a calculation I reviewed, but again, calculation can be done. In the bulk, and then these two wave functions they calculate on the computer and they see that they have the predicted behavior. You know, first they decay exponentially, then they bounce back, then there is some plateau, you know, and these things match between uh, the computer calculation department. Moreover, in this model, it's simple enough that they kind of see set of collective variables uh, analytically, they can find a set of collective variables. That is that that solves almost the same equation as the metric field, uh, the metric in the bulk satisfies. So it's a simple enough model of calligraphy where you can kind of see in details, starting from the UV and doing like effective field theory, you know, RG flows of the IR, you can see how the uh, degrees of freedom related to the bulk metric arise. I mean, this, the simplest thing was this calculation of Schwartz and uh, that this SYK model without a CC couple to it. In the deep IR limit, it's the Schwartz and thing, which is a further mention that describes the oscillations uh, of the ADS boundary. But, but it's now more advanced than that. People in more detail see emergence of the bulk in this model. So now, so that's okay. I hope I answered the, the first question. Uh, but that one was completely not used in your. Not used in my calculation. That was my point that you can. I mean, yeah, I, I just repeat myself that uh, in ADS, we have, I know, I think it's very nice, but you can say we have an overkey. 
can come to the same thing with two ways, and they agree. Okay, uh, maybe we will be happy if we can do this in one way, but we can do two ways, and they agree. But it's, it gives us, I and mean, this is definitely correct it's on the computer. It tells us that whatever array is, but the bulk of which also correct gives the same answer. So now in cosmology, but I don't, I do not know. I, I okay, wave my hands, you know, following Danny or somebody. Why maybe there is a microscopic system that describes the center if I find them many good fit, but of course we do not know. But rules of gravitational patterns, they can, uh, uh, well, with, with caution and uh, with uh, whatever, but we can, you know, translate them. And then the hope is that it will tell. So, see, so far, for example, I did not obtain. So, what was one of my hopes? One of my hopes was. The following that we will see, uh, we, we will confirm this idea. Let me go back to uh, the Penrose diagram. We will confirm the idea that number of degrees of freedom that leave on this inflation, this slice, is actually finite. It seems infinite, right? Because inflation in large becomes larger, larger, larger. I can put many, many soft modes on the infinite dimensional Hilbert space. Now, the hope was that it will become finite. What we obtained is consistent with it because, well, I didn't say this, but once you include entropy, you do all the calculations, actually, entanglement of entropy of the solution saturates and some quantity of S0. If you take a very large uh, interval, then entropy actually does not grow as in naivety. Remember, naivety will grow in slope L. In fact, uh, there is this analog of. Um, uh, Log L, so it, it goes up and then it didn't saturate, uh, whatever, before, before this uh, uh, basically saturates and then actually goes to zero. And uh, well, we know when it, yeah, for infinite units, it just saturates. So, so this is consistent with scaling finite dimensional zero, but it doesn't confirm it. Of course, you can have a state, you know, in infinite dimensional Hilbert space that has finite dimensional degrees of freedom. The next calculation we want to do is we actually want to calculate uh, more carefully overlaps between the states. You know, say we have a state where we have some CV oscillation over here and over here. And in fact, the field theory is orthogonal because it's a localized, uh, you know, different parts of space. -time. Now, in the black hole case, it is known that actually they're not orthogonal. Okay. And in fact, if you consider just in one region of the black hole, you consider enough oscillation. It exhausts the Hilbert space of the of the black hole. Okay, that can be shown. So the hope, I know, it could be that in the center, the Euclidean calculations show us something similar. That actually the uh, measuring CP radiations in one part of the center exhausts the entire Hilbert space. Something like this you can dream about. Uh, and then if it comes out of this uh, Euclidean uh, of this pattern recalculation. It will be, you know, the strong support of the idea that there's also a microscopic description with finite many, with finite many degrees of freedom. But it can also fail, and you know, then we'll say, oh, we see the difference between the citron and the black hole at the level of gravity, but it can also it can also be very different as also microscopic description. So this is this kind of the game, you know. Uh, uh, there is another question, yeah. unless you want to say something else. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if uh, it was about the information process, but is it important that the quantity, like what I see also the data here, like the phase curve for the symmetry of the uh, Super symmetric. Uh, do, do I see the hair like you should repeat the question? Uh, okay, uh, but I, I'm not sure. Let me try to repeat the question. You tell me if you think. I think the question was uh, can we see this kind of phase curve behavior for some supersymmetric black hole? I guess counting some BBS states, etc. Uh, so again, I'm not an expert on this by by any means, but just over, you know taking part in some discussions. Uh, I think the idea is that uh, because these DBS black holes they do not evaporate, you kind of you don't see you cannot really formulate the problem over there. Uh, so I think the short answer is no, or at least people don't know how to do it. Like nobody so far managed to come up with a useful setup where counting of DBS state. Would you know shed any light on this kind of problem that we're discussing here, namely to you know, first formulate some version of information paradox and then solve it. So 
people, I think, latest I've heard that people think that it's not possible, but okay, maybe there is a more clever procedure. You need to go away from, you know, you need to let it start evaporating, you need to go you know, away from uh, uh, DPS stuff, and then things get com more complicated to this control. Okay, good. We are going over time. So it's in the second speaker again.